When the first The Surge came out, I think a lot of people very directly compared it to Dark Souls and honestly that wasn't really the case. Sure you have the light and heavy attacks attached to your bumper and trigger button and um, you face enemies potentially for the most part one on one and if you died you dropped your scrap or souls or whatever you, it's called and you have to go back and get it. But the Surge did a lot different. Um, and a lot different compared to any other of its contemporaries that followed the Dark Souls mold. It added a lot of things like your exoskeleton which you could then get parts from and upgrade those parts. And even the, the, the gameplay feature of obtaining those parts was quite unique in the sense that you could target different parts of the body. And if it had the blue on it, it meant it was weaker which means that enemy was more susceptible to taking more damage by attacking it. However, there was a risk reward system in place. Should you go to the orange one, you could potentially, um, if you attack it enough times, you have a prompt to then hit an execution. And if you hit the execution, you have the potential to get either a schematic for that part, the part itself, or some elements to allow you to upgrade it. And that's just the beginning of how the Surge is different to, its con to other games in this genre. So I'll just go on and move talk talk about the Surge 2 now compared to maybe the Surge 1 or just the game in general. In the Surge 2 you are now in Jericho City and one of the biggest problems with the original game was the fact that it was very much contained in this factory style thing that just kind of held back. It just kind of there wasn't enough diversity to the locations. Jericho City well the Surge 2 takes Jericho City and moves it and just adds so much more to it. The DLC of The Surge called The Walk in the Park did this by bringing you to a theme park with all different sort of themes like it added different areas that sort of add a lot more colour, a lot more personality and it's here in The Surge 2. Um, you still have the industrial style things because that's, you know, it's, it's realistically or when you get down to it, it is a very mechanical game due to your exoskeleton. It is a mechanical thing you put yourself into. Um, but I really liked moving from really, really dense urban areas with big skyscrapers to underground sewers to the port to other places. It, the diversity of locations were definitely addressed by the developers Deck 13 here. But like I said, you can one of the best aspects of this game is that you can target different limbs of the enemies you face and in there you can then upgrade it's, it's a risk reward system there i think that's it's across a lot of different things like the more you uh, take out enemies the more tech scrap you get um, and if you look at the bottom corner while you're doing it you'll see there's this multiplier which will then go up the more you kill enemies and it's a matter of getting back to your med bay to then upgrade either your base stats or using tech scrap and different items you've picked up to upgrade parts of your exoskeleton. But once you do that, it resets that m multiplier. So you could end up getting like a buy two multiplier where you're getting double the scrap for every single enemy you kill. However, if you die, you lose all the tech scrap. Um, and here it tells you kind of where how far away it is and you've got a time limit to get back there and reclaim it um, and this reclaiming of it can be either on the ground which is a simple pickup or it will become um, in an enemy uh, like you've seen before there are also a lot of aspects to improve the multiplayer portion of or at least give it some multiplayer and that is the form of banners and revenge enemies so if you see sometimes you'll see a dead body underground it'll say that it was a certain player and there may be enemies nearby with a symbol above their head they are revenge enemies should you kill them um, the uh, some of the items that the player has lost will be given back to them which is a kind of cool co-op aspect to it um, there are also banners and the whole idea of banners is to try find the little nooks and crannies of the world and sort of or even just show off how far you've gotten through the game um, and I believe it's 24 hours um, and it'll tell you depending on a percentage of players that have played the game 
how many of them have found your banner and you will get a tech scrap reward based on that so it also helps to sort of do a daily login nearly uh, because you could potentially get 5,000 scrap every single day just by placing a banner and it, realistically after half a dozen hours that's not a ton of scrap but it's still a ad nice added little mechanic to come back and do um, gameplay wise it is faster than the Dark Souls games it is a lot more in line with something like Bloodborne it's fast and fluid and um, the enemies however can sort of get you in a loop it's this it's a pet peeve of mine where they can get you in a loop where a couple of them can hit you hit you hit you and you're dead so you've got to be careful because you can get cornered and they can sort of just trap you um, and it's frustrating like there's no denying that something like that is frustrating uh, but it can happen uh, it's it's for the most part it can be avoided you can see when it, it's possible to happen however enemies can sometimes be a little um, the hitboxes can be a little off it's not perfect and this is my biggest gripe with the game is something like Dark Souls it's deliberate and when something is deliberate deliberate everything has to be very precise the Surge 2 isn't as precise as I'd wanted it to be. It's not bad. It doesn't detract too much from the game. But in my experience it's noticeable. I played this on Xbox One X. And there's a quality mode. And there's a performance mode. One is upscaled to up to 4K at 30 frames a second. The other one is locked at 1080p at 60 frames a second. Play at 60 frames a second. Because the combat is so fast. You will need, you'll need absolute perfect frame rate. In order to achieve some of the tougher battles and some of the boss battles. Even the first, one of the first big bosses of the game. Um, I won't say what it was. It was a big mechanical thing. Um, I played at 4K or upscale, whatever it is, the quality mode. And I was just bashing my head against the wall playing it. However, I moved down then to the performance mode and took them out in two tries. And it made a huge difference because I could react to things. So that's one of the big things about this game is it is about reacting to your enemy a lot more than other games. Because of how fast it is as well, you'll need a higher frame rate. If you're on PC, go nuts to whatever your system can handle. Uh, but for consoles, stick with the 1080p 60 frames a second. And there's another reason for that. And that is even at the high resolution quality mode, it's not the best looking game. It, some of the, the textures are really rough. And when you come in and out of menus. You can see a very low res. Um, basically everything from the floor to your. Uh, the clothing and equipment on your your character. Um, it can be pretty damn blurry. And that's disappointing because. The added locations made me want to sort of be wowed by what was there in front of me and realistically it's just not the case um, it's not the best looking game and on top of that and the higher res modes it's not the best performing game I had moments where it chugged and it hitched and it jumped and for a game like that it's unforgivable um, but thankfully the 1080p mode is there and that works I saw no, no drops really I uh, may have seen like eh, once in a while something very minor but it was so minor I can't even say right now that it was definite. Um, the Surge 2 though I really enjoyed the Force one so I'm going to just try wrap up here a little bit about the game. Um, I really enjoyed the Force Surge. I think it was quite underrated. Um, the Surge 2 addresses a lot of its issues in terms of the diversity of locations. Um, I feel like the gameplay is even more... Um, enjoyable once you hit the high frame rate mode um, the ways you create your character all the different weapons you can obtain and how you obtain them the implants can make a huge difference that's something I actually didn't mention yet I'll jump onto real quick is the implants of the of your character add a lot to it this front can be from keeping an energy bar there which is used uh, to do your injections which can be anything from making you move faster to hit faster uh, to inject your health back immediately or slowly over time to give you added uh, buffs to your defenses 
and um, this is done with your energy bar obviously because of this game it is also a stamina bar but that implant system alone can drastically change how your character sort of is taken to you can make them a much stronger brutish character especially with the multiple loadouts that you can change very easily by pressing up on the d-pad um, and this allows for you to create different builds that are changeable in one go and that is a huge gain for me uh, some enemies just work better with up close and personal fast hitting my my saw and claw and all my talents and then I had a spear that was good for attacking certain enemies from a distance it's a really enjoyable game that I honestly when I started playing this game the first couple of hours didn't grab me I was like oh this game looks kind of rough it's performing kind of rough but the second I moved over to the performance mode it clicked and um, they added a lot more enemies some areas you can go to from very early on which you will get your ass handed to you um, but in terms of the genre of game this is enjoyable it's not the best of it out there but it's still good I liked it Um it's it's what you expect from a sequel of a game from a developer that isn't like huge budget games they made the changes and took their time in the right places and that's kind of all you can kind of ask for um really um it's good 